and my secretary tells me uh there's a gentleman here called James to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like James James who <laughs> <laughs> Okay okay you know that time yeah, uh, this is too, yeah. people come without appointments yeah. Okay okay let him come in and his so business I'm wondering who is this I see customers just walking so he walked in my name is James I work with Equity Building Society <laughs> Yes, I, by this to... time now I'm getting some good clients. Mm -hmm. That is actually when I started acting for Equity Building Society. Ha, you guy as an external lawyer. Eh, <laughs> That one, we hey. take it slowly. You can't just be like, well, that's when I started, like, <laughs> like, whether they also ordered bananas at the same time. <laughs> so, how does, because that's a turning point. So that's a huge mm. turning point of your life. Yes. Uh, and I, how does equity come into your life? Because that happened at Old, Old Mutual. When I was in Old Mutual, okay, even when I was in Luthuli, mm -hmm. I was their client. I Who was you? banking with equity. Oh, you were banking with them? I was banking with equity as a sub, as a client, you know, as a customer. Yes. And let's be clear, equity mm. is not a bank at this time. It's a building society, so it's not a bank. What's a building society? A building society is um, it's a financial institution, which is almost like a semi-bank because they're allowed to take deposits and give loans. Mm. but they don't have a banking license to allow them to do the full range of banking services. So a SACO is an example. It's, it's like a SACO in mm. a way. So mm. you can do savings and you can do loans. loans. So that is the difference. And also in terms of regulation, it was easy to do a building society because the capital requirements were less stringent. Mm. You know, like to start a bank that time, you needed capital of 250 million. Uh -huh. And that is why the founders of equity, because they didn't have that kind of money, they mm -hmm. said, let's start a building society because you just need to register the building society. I get it. But then they are also regulated by the central bank to some extent. Okay. And because is there a maximum that they can get? Is, can they, can they, is there a maximum amount of deposits that they, they can take? Can they take 10 billion in... In, well, technically they can, mm -hmm. but remember also the ability to raise those kind of deposits also dis depends on your brand yes. and your attractiveness to the mm -hmm. customer. Mm -hmm. So there were two. So these guys I was banking who are banking for me, um, I, I developed good rapport because I was a lawyer mm -hmm. and they started giving me work they put me on their panel. Mm. So we discussed and they told me, okay, yeah, you can, we will test you and see whether you do a good job. So they started sending clients to me, you know, like when they are doing the charges, the security mm. documentation. Yes. So I used to do that for them. Okay. But little amounts, that time there were loans of 100K, 500, 1 million. Mm. If I got a one million file, I would celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> you get a commission based on that. I, eh? Are you being paid on the basis of commission? No, as a lawyer, you get legal fee, mm. and and it's uh, stipulated in the law. Okay. There is what we call the advocate's remuneration order. Mm. So it dictates how much a lawyer should get for every kind of service. Okay. So you follow that. Yes. And the client pays once the documentation is done. Mm. So we did well, and, and I grew the business uh, from that, together with other customers, of course. But then um, by 2000, 2001, I sort of felt like I really enjoy practice, but there's one side of me that is feeling like I'm not creating the impact I would expect to create from mm. my knowledge. Mm. To be honest, I felt that way, but I had no idea what I, sh what I should be doing because mm. I'm feeling like I'm not creating impact. But 
So I started thinking, okay, so what should I do? Should I go into another field like human rights? Because human rights was also a very good field for lawyers. Mm. And a lot of my colleagues had gone there. Should, should I join an NGO? Should I be thinking about going to the UN mm. you know, at a higher level? Or what, what exactly should I do? So when I was in that phase, I decided to do um, to go back to school. Mm. Uh, so I did a postgraduate diploma in gender and development because I was getting a little bit uh, pulled to the side of women's rights. And that is also because I was doing pro bono stuff for FIDA, oh. the Federation of Women Lawyers, yep. and the Kituo Chasheria. Wow. So they used to do a lot of work for you know, the disadvantaged mothers, child protection issues, uh, uh, child... Um, support and things like that. So they would give me files and I would do them without pay as part of my contribution. So I was a bit biased. So I did the gender, the postgraduate diploma in gender mm. and development. Where did you where did you where did you do it? In, Nar in Nairobi University. Okay. I think I graduated in 2001. Mm. Because it's a short, I think it took about a year. Then um when I did that, now I'm at that phase of, so what should be my, my next move? And then when I was sitting in my office in 2001, um, I get a visitor. And my secretary tells me, uh, there's a gentleman here called James to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, James, James, who? <laughs> okay, okay. You know that time. Yes, uh, this is good, yeah. People come without appointments. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let him come in. And his so business. I'm wondering who is this? Is he customers just walk in? So he walked in. My name is James. I work with Equity Building Society. So I'm like, I'm Mary. Um, <laughs> 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 so he tells me, I've been referred to you by my colleagues. Oh, nice. Now, the ones we, we do the conveyancing yes. transactions with because mm -hmm. they were in credit. They are the ones who used to support the credit customers. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, what can I do for you? So, he tells me, oh, uh, we are looking for a lawyer to help us with a transaction. And they have said you do a good job for us. So mm. that's why I'm here. <laughs> okay. So I'm on my edge of my seat. I'm like this. I can see. Then I saw it. What? How did this? Have, how did it all end? <laughs> so, okay. So where are the documents? So he gives me the the document. It's a contract. Mm. And I almost fell out of my seat. First of all, do you know it's um, it's an investment agreement. Mm -hmm. So what had happened is equity by this time was growing very fast. And they had um, a fund called Africa Microfinance Fund mm -hmm. which said, we want to invest in you, in your company. Right. And that is because you support financial inclusion and microfinance, and our fund has been set up to support that. So we want to give you some money. Do you know how much? It was $1.6 million. Okay. $1.6 million. Yes. That's a hundred and something million. Okay. At that time, times the, the exchange rate was okay, so it was $120 million <sighs> Kenya shillings. Remember what I told you? Yes. The <laughs> The biggest charge I had done. <laughs> you just did the numbers. So I'm like, okay, I, 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 I need some air, you know, <laughs> to fathom this number. So, but you know what? You know, you don't tell a client you don't know yes. <laughs> as a lawyer. Yeah. So I told him, oh, oh, thank you, Jim. So uh, I've seen the agreement. But uh, if you just give me a few days, I will review it and I'll come back to you with an opinion. 
okay? So he says, okay, that's fine. Do you know who the lawyers on the other side was? Uh-huh. The top law firm in the country at that time. Who was that? Kaplan yes, yes, and Stratton. Yes. Okay, so I'll talk to you. James went. Let's be clear, this is the first time you're meeting James. Yes, this is the first time. But I had no idea who he was. You didn't even know of him? No, because I used to deal with his colleagues. Yes. And you see, I had not even taken time to understand, you know, how the structure mm. of equity was. Yes, yes, yes. It was a very small it, building society. At yes, that time. building society. Yes. Yeah. So, but I used to be the client. But you know, a client sometimes doesn't go into who is, and mm. he was not even the MD that time. Mm. He was the finance director. The, the MD was John Mwangi. Mm, okay. Was, who was the first, uh, the, the CEO at that time. Okay. So he goes. You do the dance. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was stressed. You're panicked. <laughs> I am panicked. So now I'm, I'm sweating because I'm like, this is not one of those transactions that you can play around oh. with. <laughs> so the moment he closes the door like this, I take my handbag, I take those documents and rush to the high court library. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the librarian, a lady called Cecilia, was my friend. So I tell Cecilia, Cecilia, I want each and every book that is on commercial law. Wow, wow, Give me wow, that time wow. the library was all physical, journals, mm. books, nini. We, it's not like now when you Google and yep. you get it. Tells everything. you where it is, yes. Yeah, so that was not there. Now, looking at the agreement, there were things that I had never had. Terminologies. Terminologies. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Put option, right of first refusal. Yeah. I don't know what. Tag along lights, drag along lights, and I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> so, Cecilia, any book that talks about these things, tag along, refusal, name, give it to me. I literally camped in the library. Mm for almost a week. But by the time we were done, I figured it out. Mm. And we successfully completed that transaction and the money came in. Wow. No issue. 1.6 million came in. And you were happy. I was so happy. <laughs> you got, I mean. Yeah. Now, you know, they are, you know, we also say that Luck is opportunity finding you prepared. Yes. Mm. And, and I think for me that was the classic case. Mm. Because you see, already I'm in that phase where I'm preparing for the next phase, but mm. I had no idea what the next phase will be. Mm. But in a way, this is what now turns out to be my next phase. Mm. So when that money came, one of the agreements they had was that one of the things we have to do is to convert the building society into a bank. Mm. So again, James comes and That's tells me. Now this time he calls me to the office and tells me, can you help us with the conversion from building society to a bank? And there's a lot of work to be done because you cannot just do a transfer of the same entity. Mm. You have to create a bank and then transfer the assets of the building society into so, the bank. Mm. It, so it was quite a long and complicated Even process. knowing that alone is, is... Yes. is Yes. So I started the process. If, okay. We've entered such a crucial conversation. Mm. And I think an important part of this conversation mm. is to understand the history of this entity yes. called called Equity Building Society. Mm. You get, so that by the time people are understanding its model, how it works and why it's even gotten to the level that yeah. it's attracting this investment mm. and even getting to the point where it needs to convert into a bank, mm. it is from a point of history. Yes. And me, even me, I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even doing this for the audience. <laughs> this is total selfishness. <laughs> so we're going to take a break and leave you on this nice cliffhanger and we're coming back to, change, to do this. <laughs> 